Hi everyone, this is me again, Teacher Will, and welcome back to our Statistics and Probability subject. This is the first video of key distribution module, and for today's video, we will learn about illustrating the distribution. Let's start! So let's begin by having this activity, D or not D. Tuwing kailan nga ba ulit natin? gagamitin at hindi gagamitin ang, center, ang normal distribution by central limit theorem. So, meron tayo ditong apat na cases and let's identify if we can um, use Z or not Z. Okay? Let's start. So, we have here a box asking us, is the sample size less than 30? So, on the first case, sabihin na natin na no. So, large size siya. The follow-up question is, is there a given population standard division? Let's say yes. Tingnan nyo, z or not z? Of course, that is z. So, large size at given ang population standard division by definition of central limit theorem, z po yan. Okay, paano naman kung hindi given ang standard division pero large size siya? Pwede pa rin kayang gamitin ang central limit theorem? The answer is, yes po. Pwede pa rin po kasi... Given na large sample size siya. So, ang mangyayari, kailangan lang natin i-replace yung population standard division with the sample standard division. Okay? So, third scenario. Let's say, yes po, less than 30 ang ating sample. The question is, is there a given population standard division? We said, we said yes. Meron. Tingin nyo, pwede pa rin kayang gamitin ang Z or not Z? And the answer is, Yes, Z pa rin po ang gagamitin, though maliit ang kanyang sample size as long as given po ang ating population standard deviation, yes pa rin po. Central limit sure pa rin po. So, tuwing kayo lang lang hindi gagamitin ang Z. Yun po ay kung less than ang ating ang population sa I mean sample size at hindi po given ang ating population standard deviation. So, yun lang po natin hindi gagamitin ang Z. Ang lesson natin ngayon, pag-aaralan natin yung distribution na gagamitin natin kapag ang ating sample size ay less than 30 at hindi po given ang ating population standard deviation. Okay? Yes. Yeah. So, ito na po yung ating distribution na gagamitin kapag less than 30 at hindi po given ang ating population standard deviation. That is what we call our students t-distribution or simply t-distribution. At ang form yung formula is still follows um, the formula for our central limit theorem, but ang given na po is sample standard division. And ito ay ang ating sample mean, ito ay ang ating population mean, at yung n is still the sample size with our n minus 1 as the degrees of freedom. Yeah. So again, this formula is used when n is less than 30, at ang ating population standard division is unknown o hindi po siya given, or we cannot identify po. Yan. So, sino nga ba ang nakadiscover nitong um, ating t-distribution? Siya po ay isang English statistician na ang pangalan po ay si William Silly Gosset. Ayan. So, kapangalan ko siya, madaling nyo nalang maaalala. William Silly Gosset. Gosset. Ayan. In 1908, he published a paper, The Probable error of the mean in the biometrica journal under the pseudonym student. Ayan. Kaya siya tinawag na student's t-distribution or simply the t-distribution. So, ang t-distribution po natin is a probability distribution which is utilized in estimating parameters of a certain population in case na ang sample size natin is small and or the population variance or standard division is unknown. So, it Para lang din siyang z-distribution natin na bell-shaped at symmetric about the x-axis. So para lang din siya yan, di ba? Pero kung mapapansin nyo, mas flatter at mas spread yung kanyang curve. Ayan. So which indicates na mas great yung, greater yung kanyang variance. Mas malayo sila yung mga values sa mean natin. Okay? So the exact shape shape of the t-distribution depends on the degrees of freedom. So, kung titingnan ninyo, oh, habang pataas na pataas po yung ating um, degrees of freedom, it tends toward our normal curve. Ayan. So, yung una natin kulay pula, ayan siya. 
3 lang yung degree of freedom niya. At nung 30 na siya, ayan o, oh, halos um, palapit na siya sa ating, o kamukha niya na yung ating normal curve. Ayan. Habang palaki ng palaki po yung ating degree of freedom, ganun din po ay palapit na yun po na siyang palapit na maging standard normal distribution. So, when we are defining a t-distribution, it is necessary to specify yung number of freedoms natin. Ayan. So, the degree of freedom refers to the number of independent observation in each set of data. So, that um, this number of independent observation is the sample size minus 1, or in symbol, ito po siya, df is equal to n minus 1, wherein our df is the degree of freedom, and n is the sample size. So, halimbawa, given a sample size of 9, we will have a degree of freedom 8, kasi minus 1 lang siya. And if given, ang degree of freedom natin is 40, alam din natin na ang ating um, sample size is 15. Pero, Minsan kasi, iba, iba rin yung way ng pag-compute nila ng degrees of freedom. Depende sa mga applications. So, mga higher statistics ninyo, mas maiintindihan nyo pa yun. So, let's discuss more of the properties of our t-distribution. First property, we have here that the t-distribution is symmetrical about zero. So, ibig sabihin lang po nun, kapag mag-draw tayo ng segment, ayan po, yung segment na yan, from the peak of our um, curve hanggang dun sa zero, hahatiin niya daw po yung ating um, curve into two equal parts. So, ibig sabihin, itong part na to ay equal po siya sa part na to. Kasi symmetrical po siya about um, here, sa gitna, or ang ating zero. So, yung mga t-scores natin dito sa horizontal na axis will be also divided. So, ito, magiging positive values at itong nasa Kakalahati pa, yung itong yellow side is negative values naman siya. Okay? Next, the t-distribution is bell-shaped like the normal distribution but has heavier tails. Ayan, kung, edit, kung titignan nyo po yung um, curve na ating normal distribution compared sa ating t-distribution, ayan, mas, uh, mas lower siya, no? mas mababa yung kanyang peak at yung uh, mas, uh, mas malawak po yung ating um, tails. Ayan. Kasi nga mas mabigat po siya dyan. Ibig sabihin, mas, na, mas marami po tayong values na mas malayo sa ating mean, which is ang ating zero. Ayan. Yung tails pa rin po natin ay asymptotic dito sa ating um, horizontal axis. So, ibig sabihin, yung bawat tails po natin, it will approach the horizontal axis but never touches it. So, naman, Yan nga, sabi ko sa inyo kanina na yung mean, median, and mode of the t-distribution are all equal to zero. At nandun po siya sa gitna pa rin po kasi asymmetrical po siya about zero ang t-distribution. Next, the standard deviation and variance of the t-distribution varies with the sample. Iba-iba po siya at it is always greater than one. Unlike sa ating normal distribution, which is yung ating standard deviation po ay equal to 1. So, as the number of our sample size increases and approaches infinity, that uh, the variance, our variance is or a standard deviation is approaching 1. Yan, palapit siya ng palapit na 1. Kasi sabi nga natin kanina na habang lumalaki ang degrees of freedom natin, um, nagiging mukhang normal distribution na po siya. Yan. And the total area under the t-distribution curve is 1 po one pa rin po siya, or 100%, just like yung ating normal curve. Ayan. So, yun lang po yung lahat ng properties na ating t-distribution. So, tandaan nyo lang siya, may pagkakahawid po talaga siya sa ating normal curve, but then, meron siyang properties that is different from our uh, normal distribution. Kasi nga, ating sample po dito ay mas maliit na po siya. At we don't have the parameter or the population standard division ang meron lang tayo ay sample standard division which varies sample to sample. Ayan. Okay, so let's have an activity where you know, we will um, identify whether a statement is a t-distribution or not. Ayan, so isulat na lang po natin kapag ang statement po natin describes a t-distribution, let's write true. At kapag hindi naman, let's write false. Okay, so una, the t-distribution is used to estimate population parameters when the sample size is small and or the population variance is unknown. So ano po siya? True or false? Yan, napakadali po yan. That is, of course, true. True po yan. Ayan. Next, the mean, median, and mode are all equal to zero. That is correct. True pa rin po yan. Ayan. The variance is equal to 1. 
Ayan. So, this is false. Sabi na natin kanina, it is greater than 1. So, habang palaki ng palaki, it is approaching 1. Pero, hindi siya equal to 1. Number 4, the t-distribution curve is bell-shaped. Yes, bell-shaped pa rin po siya. Though, mukha na siyang napipink bell. Ayan. Next, the standard deviation is always greater than 1. That is correct. Always po na greater than 1 ang ating standard deviation or the variance. Okay, next. Half of the total area under the t-distribution curve is equal to 1. Hmm. Sabi natin ang total area is 1. Pero ang sabi dito, half ng total area. So, dapat 0.5 ang half. Pero dito, sabi dito, equal to 1. So, this is false. Ayan. Next, the curve is symmetrical about its zero. So, yun yung first property natin. That is true. Symmetrical po siya about to zero. So, again, kakatiin niya ang ating normal curve into two equal um, sides. Next, the shape of the t-distribution curve depends on the sample mean. Depends ba siya sa sample mean? I think, nakadepende siya sa ating degree of freedom. Okay, this is false. False po to. Kasi nakadepende po siya sa ating degree of freedom. Ayan. Next, the tails of the t-distribution curve approach the horizontal axis but never touch it. Yes. Opo. Same din po sa ating um, t-distribution. As the degree degrees of freedom increases, or increase, the t-distribution curve looks more and more like the normal distribution. Yes, this is a yes. Yeah. And so that will be all for our um, topic for today. Thank you again and make sure guys to hit the notification bell to get updated with our lessons. Bye!